What's up, Planeswalkers? It's your boy, AK Dog. Another fun video for you guys. This one, we got another Is That List that's uh, focused around Mizium Tank. For those of you guys who did not see or don't remember, Mizium Tank is a one red red artifact vehicle, 3 2 with trample. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, Mizium Tank becomes an artifact creature and gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And has a crew cost of one. So you can uh, use it power one or greater to crew it or just by casting any non-creature spell including another Mizium tank because the Mizium tank is just an artifact and that will trigger it to become an artifact creature and plus one plus one with trample so kind of a sweet little card doesn't really see a whole lot of play it's kind of a fun build around last time i ran it with a, a particular dreadhorde or canist so you get these really explosive turns uh, however, for this one, uh, we got a suggestion to run it with the adventure spells like Brazen Borrower and Bone Crusher Time. So I kind of threw something together, ran it through some a uh, little bit of playtesting, and this is kind of where I've uh, what I've come up with. Uh, so we're running all four Mizium tanks still, since that is kind of the focus of the deck, and we're going to be running four Ops. Just a great way to trigger the Mizium tank. Let's just kind of scry and uh, dig for what we need. Uh, Spectral Sailor as a 4 of, just uh, just such a great 1 drop, 1-1, one, one, flash, flying, and then uh, the mid to late game, you can just pay 4 mana to draw cards, so we can kind of dig for more uh, instants and sorceries to uh, trigger our Mizium tank and that kind of thing. Uh, 4 of Fervent Champion, it's a 1-1 one, one first striking haste of course, whenever it attacks, another target attacking knight you control gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, so this works extremely well in multiples. Let's, have, let's just get off to some pretty uh, fast starts in certain situations. And then uh, <clears throat> we're not uh, taking advantage of the equipment cost, so that part is irrelevant. But we do have another knight that will also get some buffs. And since we are kind of doing uh, some tricky stuff, the first strike can definitely come in handy as we, uh, uh, you know, give it an additional buff with some of our other spells or uh, even things like shock. Uh, doing shock damage to our uh, opponent's creature when they're blocking the fervent champion, then the fervent champion will deal uh, first strike damage and potentially kill it. Uh, before it even takes any damage, even if the creature has more uh, toughness. Uh, so the Fervent Champion obviously deals one first strike damage, Shock deals two damage, so three toughness, uh, for example. We have other ways to uh, buff the Fervent Champion as well. Uh, a couple of radical ideas, just another uh, kind of a prowess trigger, non-creature spell uh, trigger, and also kind of a way to kind of continue digging through the deck. And of course it has a jump start, so we can always cast this uh, uh, in the later game as well by exiling it from our graveyard and discarding one of our cards, probably a land, to uh, help us kind of dig for more answers and uh, get those prowess type triggers. Uh, for a little bit of uh, removal, we'll get a couple lava coils, you know, dealing 4 damage to your creature and that creature would, goes to exile. Uh, 4 of Rimrock Knight is our first adventure spell. Uh, it's a knight so it synergizes with our fervent champion and uh, also has the instant side here which uh, synergizes with the Mizium tank and even the Fervent Champion, where target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 on the end of turn. So we can make our Fervent Champion a 3-1 for a striker, for uh, you know just one red mana, and then you can play it down as a 3-1 that cannot block for 2. And then of course the Fervent Champion and Rimrock Knight both attack, then the Rimrock Knight gets the uh, power boost, so it becomes a 4-1 attacker. So that's pretty decent. Uh, a couple of Lucky Clovers, just to kind of leverage some of these adventure spells to get some extra value out of them. You know, we're not all in on the adventure theme, but uh, this can certainly come in handy in certain spots. And, uh, you know, it's easy enough to kind of sideboard out in the right uh, matchups as well. So just a two of, I think, is right. And, of course, all four Brazen Borrowers just uh, works really well in pretty much any deck. Uh, we've got the Lucky Clover, so we can bounce two things. Uh, the instant speed petty theft triggers our Mizium tank, so we can kind of bounce, uh, you know, any big creatures on their end, planeswalkers, enchantments, whatever is giving us a problem, bounce it back to our hand, slow down our opponent, trigger our Mizium tank, push through for damage, and then, you know, uh, later on we can play it down as a 3-1 flyer, uh, so that's pretty sweet. And of course, Bone Crusher Giant as a 4 of, being able to stomp something for 2 damage, and then having a 4-3 three for 3 mana. Uh, is pretty awesome, and then whenever, of course, it's dealt, it's uh, the target of a spell, uh, deals two damage to that spell's controller. So just another way, to kind of push across a little bit of damage, even if your opponent does have some spot removal or something like that. Uh, so we're running uh, seven islands, seven mountain, all four steam vents, all four temple of epiphany. So 
kind of the same thing. 22 lands, so trying to keep it low, but still have enough to, uh, you know, play out our creatures and have uh, room to cast our spells as well. And go over the sideboard, we got three unsummons. I uh, thought about the, the other one, it was a stern uh, dismissal or whatever, but, uh, you know, just kind of being able to bounce like a one of our adventure creatures back to our hand, I think is pretty, could be useful in certain situations. So it's kind of returns any target creature to its owner's hand. So if we just want to bounce our opponent's creatures, bring our adventure creature back to our hand, and get the adventure uh, side going uh, one more time. Um, so I think just having that versatility is uh, worthwhile. Um, <clears throat> a couple running uh, Ether Gust. In speed, target uh, red or green spell, and then our opponent gets to choose if they want to put it back on the top of the bottom of their library. Um, obviously we are running red, so in theory we could use it for some of ours, maybe protection uh, on like our museum tank or something like that, but uh, most most time it's just to deal with our opponents' big, powerful red and green spells. You know, obviously Embercleave and things like that. Uh, maybe like a Chandra six. And uh, another way to kind of deal with the red is uh, Cerulean Drake. It's a one-one flyer, protection from red, and you can also sacrifice it to counter target spell that targets you. So if opponents trying to kind of burn you out for the last bit, a little bit of damage. You can kind of sacrifice this and kind of buy yourself a little bit of time and maybe you can win on the following turn something like that uh, mostly just in there to kind of uh, jump block against red decks and uh, not take any damage uh, a couple amberth shield breakers it's another uh, adventure uh, creature one mat mana you can uh, destroy a target artifact or you can pay two until you have a two one human knight so it's another knight synergized with our fervent champion we also have a couple uh, unchained berserkers uh, since we are a pretty uh, aggressive deck, we want to get around those uh, kind of mono-white uh, life gain type decks. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 2, so not great. But obviously against white, it's an all-star. as has protection from white, so they can't get rid of it with their uh, uh, enchantment removal. And then, of course, we can just block their creatures all day, their Johnny's pride mates and things like that, and not take any damage from it. And when we're ready to start attacking in, it gets plus 2, plus 0 and, uh, when it's attacking, so it becomes a 3-1. And has protection from white, so that means white creatures can't even block it. So that's pretty sweet in certain situations. And since we are is it colors, we're likely to be running us other kind of a blue base decks. So we're running a couple mystical disputes as we have a little bit of a protection against whatever they're running, as we encounter any target spell. Uh, <clears throat> as controller pays three, and it costs two less if it targets a blue spell. So typically we're just going to bring this in against any kind of blue base deck. Uh, maybe Esper Control, other is it? maybe a Flash deck, if those are still running around, and for one mana instant speed, basically a counter spell, it's pretty sweet. And just kind of another way to kind of deal with those life gain decks is a couple of Tibalts. Three loyalty, or three mana, five loyalty Planeswalker, your opponents can't gain life. And then for minus two, you get a 1-1 one, one Red Devil creature token, and when it dies, it deals one damage to any target. So this is a pretty sweet card against Mono uh, White, slow them down so they can't gain life, and... Uh, <clears throat> their 1-1 Devil can pick off a lot of their creatures as well. So yeah, that's the uh, deck, and let's jump into some best of three. And see how we do with Adventure Tank in Arena Standard best of three. Hope you guys are staying safe wherever you're at. And here we are up against Cobra. Sweet. A nice Elspeth avatar. Sweet. We're going to be on the play. Uh, uh, hand's not amazing, but we do have a Mizium tank. We have both of our colors, red and blue. We'll just lead with Temple of Tiffany, try to find uh, another land. Let's get these Mizium tanks down on curve. And we got the Shock and Brazen Borrower to kind of buy us some time. There's a Shock target if I've ever seen one. No reason to go around, just scared of it now. And if we miss the land drop, we can uh, at least Brazen Borrow whatever uh, creature they play. Sure. Child of the Night. Uh, in that case, I think we just want to get our tank down ASAP. Next turn we can bounce something and trigger our tank. Or we can just get a second tank down. We'll see what they play. There it is. Yeah, we'll deal with that. Bounce that. And yeah, I 
think we'll just uh, go ahead and border dash as well and just push in for maximum damage. I doubt they have artifact removal, so it's going to be hard for them to deal with this Mizium tank. But obviously, they are gaining life with the Child of Night. These uh, petty thefts are going to slow them down. Shocker. Okay, let's keep uh, bouncing this aerials, keep annoying them. Play you, so get some more uh, threats on board. Could have like a disfigure or something like that. That would answer it pretty cleanly, but we'll see what they got. If it's something like a murder, then they won't be able to play the aerialist as well. Seems to be what these mono black uh, vampire lists run is typically is murder. So if they just keep aerialisting, then we will just keep petty thefting. Just kind of annoy them to death. Right, taking two. Go up to 15. Okay, they obviously have removal if they're not going to. Uh, Get their aerials down. So I think we want to protect our tank. And then decide if I want to kill it. Nope. Uh, yeah, I think we just hold up uh, Spectral Sailor plus Brazen Barrow at their end step. And the only reason not to play the aerials is because you're holding up the removal for our Mizium tank. And since you're mono black, you don't have uh, easy ways to deal with it outside of creature removal. The best thing we do is not let it become a creature. And they are still not playing their aerialist down. We could also have a uh, ritual sit maybe. But it doesn't seem like these decks usually run ritual, at least in the main. I'm pretty sure it's just a uh, murder hit. Still have men open for another murder, so they could have just be holding up two of them. Yeah, I guess they just have another murder here. Seem pretty intent on getting rid of our Mizium tank, so we'll just attack in with our uh, two creatures. to uh, her Petty Fifth and the Brazen Borrower as well, so we'll just do that. So I'm pretty sure they still have a murder here, but I think not. Okay, it's a perfect, perfectly reasonable uh, revenge target. Too late. Wow, that'll uh, really annoy them. Let's get another tank down, trigger. Uh, where are we at? Four, five, and six. Uh, yeah, we should be easy. Exactly, thanks to the extra Mizium tank uh, trigger. So we got pretty lucky there with finding all of our brazen borrowers. And we got the annoying Revenge of Ravens. Of course, the bloodthirsty Aerialist. So this is why we can easily slide out the Lucky Clover. Definitely want Tibalt in here since they're trying to gain some life. Uh, Unsummon is going to work pretty well against them. Just bring in all unsummons. Uh, probably shave off the radical idea. That seems pretty expendable. And we'll just shave off one opt. So 
So a little bit more controlling, losing our card draw, but we are losing, uh, coming a little bit more controlling. So the card draw is not as important if we're not being as aggressive, especially when we're on the uh, draw here. On something just kind of a nice way to deal with the aerialist, especially once it starts getting out of a uh, lava coil range, and we just hit, do have the two lava coils anyway. But it's going to get bigger than uh, pretty much all of our creatures, or it can. Um, a little awkward, but we'll keep it. Shadow Temple, destroy when he lands. Focus on getting our missing tank online first. But obviously, we don't want them to get value off the Shadow Sphere either, so we might just have to Lava Coil something here. Okay, we're not going to do anything, but we're straight away land. Of course, we draw another land because that's how Arena works. Play our tank. Maybe we just want to get rid of. Maybe we just get rid of the aerialist and play it safe. My opponents aren't really doing much. So we'll just do that. So we'll just be holding up removal and Ra revenge of ravens and some four and five drops. Just kept a slow hand for some reason. Okay, Castle Lockdown is good. Red Red. Red. Bouncing doesn't do a whole lot because I could just play it and then follow up with the swamp. Okay, let's just get our Mizium tanks so online. So Dread Presence is pretty reasonable against us. Shock doesn't do it, and we already used up a lava coil. Yeah, they're going to start gaining a ton of life here. Hmm. Also, we have the unsummons that can really slow them down a little bit. Okay, second museum tank. And if they deal with this one, I guess I have another one to follow it up with. Get some removal out of their hand. Let him go to combat first, and then we'll bounce this uh, Dread Presence. So now they can uh, murder one of these Mizium tanks in response, or they can play a Dread Presence, but they can't do both. But we'll be slowed them down quite a bit here. Witch's Vengeance. That's a, it's a card. I mean, doesn't get any more clutch than that. We're not tribal, so I'm not really sure. I guess that's the only way to deal with the Mizium tank. This vehicle not a type. Mm. Is it not? Huh, that's interesting. I wonder if Museum Tank, because it's an artifact field, doesn't have a creature type and therefore which is Avengers doesn't do anything. I'm guessing our opponent is furiously trying to figure out a way to make this work. bounce the Shadow Spear, but we do want to get in damage with these Mizium tanks, so. Not really sure, uh, 
that's kind of an interesting turn. Hopefully we can draw a spell and we can uh, use that to get these Mizium tanks online. So I'd much rather save the uh, petty theft on their when they replay the Dread Vengeance, uh, Dread Presence next turn. Sorry. Bear. Wow. So that's unfortunate. So which is Vengeance? They thought that would. Uh, do the trick, and I was a little concerned there for a second as well, but apparently these do not have a creature type. Okay. We found our on the way to trigger these guys. Perfect. Yeah, well, I think we'll play out our uh, Bone Crusher Giant. And we'll flash in the Spectral Sailor. Uh, at their end step. Okay, we're in a pretty commanding spot. Bouncing their Dread Peasants back to their hand and then them going for Witch's Vengeance on the Mizium tanks, but not able to kill them with that. That's uh, kind of cost them the game, maybe. But they were looking pretty good with the Dread Presence Shadow Spear combo. So they take four here? Wow. Grant being targeted, and the additional cost of Murderous Rider. So they do have two mana. Okay, it only has lifelink on their turn. Uh, all we have to do is uh, Petty Theft, and it's over. Lava Coil will do. So keep it nice and short and sweet. So that's the adventure version of Mizium Tank. Uh, not as explosive as the uh, Dreadheart or Canist version in the first build. But uh, obviously this one may be a little more versatile because Petty Theft uh, can bounce any non-land permanent and things like that. Bone Crusher Giant, just a good card uh, in general. And of course Rimrock Knight, being able to uh, kind of get your prowess triggers and then turn around and play a 3-1 creature as well. Um, yeah, so either way, they're both pretty fun builds, just kind of up to your own individual preference. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the deck, and thank you for the deck suggestion. All right, I uh, look forward to seeing you guys.